I know you can't see this from where the camera is, but this uh, tachometer is measuring the speed of the fidget spinner, and it just hit 5,072, 5,100. It's a little over 5,000 RPM in a matter of seconds. I made a couple of fidget spinner videos a year or so ago where I turned them into a brushless motor and uh, there was a lot of interest on the part of folks that looked at those videos and getting them going faster and faster and one of the interests that I had was to see if I could get a fidget spinner going 5,000 RPM. That sounded like a good round number. And what I'd like to do in this video is show you some of the things that I had to do to reach that goal. The first thing and probably the most important was to have a good way to attach magnets to the lobes on a fidget spinner. When you spin one of these things there's quite a bit of force trying to throw the magnet off the edge and if you get this going 5000 RPM, if my math is right, the outer edge of that fidget spinner is going almost 50 miles an hour and that could be quite a uh, painful uh, impact if a magnet flew off and hit you. What I settled on for this series of experiments was a, ma a magnet that I found on the internet. These are tapered magnets with a, that have a, a hole in the center of them, a countersunk hole, so that you could put a screw through that and attach it to a piece of wood like that, perhaps to hang a, a picture or what have you. And uh, what I did in this case was to put a magnet on the lobe of a fidget spinner, put a bolt through, put a washer and the nut on the back and tighten those down, and here's what I wind up with. If I can get these magnets off, they do hold rather well. I've got a fidget spinner with three magnets on one side and three nuts and washers on the back side, and they spin beautifully. And that's what I've got in this particular uh, demo here that I was just working with. So the first thing is to attach the magnets securely so that you're not going to get hurt. The second thing I needed was a way to detect uh, when the... Uh, lobes pass a particular point to turn the magnet on and what I settled on for this series of experiments again is something different I came across a uh, very inexpensive as a matter of fact here I've got one still in the package I think I paid about a dollar uh, in quantity for these little guys this is an infrared sensor there is an infrared emitter and an infrared detector and if you attach five volts to it when you come across those two sensors, it will detect that, and there's an out pin, a pin labeled out, that will change when that happens. Now here's a sample that I have attached to a battery, and that little LED on the right-hand side just indicates that it's got power. What I'm doing here is moving my finger across it, and I, hopefully you can see that LED changing. And I also took the standard package that you get with the LEDs pointing up, and I bent the LEDs so that they're pointing uh, at a right angle so that I can put them underneath the, uh, the fidget spinner itself. And these work very, very well, very simple to implement. The biggest thing that I had to do in order to get the increased speed with the fidget spinner was come up with a better way to use the magnet. You may recall in the, uh, the first series of experiments, I had an electromagnet and I had a fidget spinner above it and as the fidget spinner would spin I would turn on the electromagnet to give the mag next magnet a little pull and then it would shut off a little pull shut off a little pull shut off and so on and I reasoned that works pretty well but wouldn't it be great if you could take the electromagnet and have it pushing and pulling and in order to do that, you're probably aware of this, but if I take a compass and an electromagnet and see if I can get all these things in two hands, if I connect power up to that electromagnet, bring the magnet near the compass, you see that it's attracting the red end of the compass needle. If I reverse polarity, the power, now it's attracting the white one. So my, uh, my goal was to have it set up so that for the part of the journey where the magnet is closest to the electromagnet have it pulling but as soon as it goes by about midway have it switch to pushing away so that it pushes it away and then towards away towards away now how do you do that well there's a little trick 
there's a device called an H-bridge. And somewhere here I have an H-bridge. Here we go. An H-bridge is a series of four transistors. Actually, in this case, they're MOSFETs again. And they operate like a double pull, double throw switch. It will electronically uh, change the polarity of the output voltage that's coming out of this. And I've got a little demonstration here that I can show you. This is an H bridge. And here's my little sensor that I was working with a minute ago. And I want you to pay attention to the two little lights right here. When I run my finger across, not only does it detect my finger, but those lights indicate when the light is in that position, the polarity coming out of this wire is in one direction. When it's on the other side, it's in the other direction. So here it's perhaps pulling the magnets. Here it's pushing the magnets. And it can do that up to about 20 kilohertz, which is way more than we really need to worry about. So we have our sensor. We have the H bridge. And you may notice hiding over here in the corner is an Arduino. In order to get all of this to operate, you have to have a microcontroller to talk to the H bridge, to talk to the sensor, and to give a little bit of, uh, of synchronization to all of it. Here is a demo, let me move a couple things here, of one of my Arduino driven uh, fidget spinners. And I'm going to turn it on by applying 12 volts to it. And once the Arduino fires up, there we go. You can see it turns rather nicely. You can also adjust the timing. Here it slow down by moving the position of the sensors. As I approach the ideal position, you'll see the speed changing. Now the other major change that I made, you may notice this is very similar to what we used in the first video. I've got a coil down here that's an electromagnet. I've got my three lobes that have three magnets and my sensor. The last thing that I did to achieve the 5000 RPM was take, instead of one electromagnet, three. And they are spaced evenly around this platform. You can see them. They are actually attached to uh, bolts that are countersunk into the, um, the top of this panel. And when I turn this one on, let me fire it up again, not only do I have the H bridge part of the time pushing against the, the lobe, part of the time pulling the lobe, but I also have uh, three magnets pulling on the three, or excuse me, three coils pulling on the three magnets at the same time. And once that wakes up, this one self-starts, I think probably because of the position of the, uh, the sensor, but it's going up. And over here is the tachometer. I'm up to 4,500, 46, 47, 48, 49, ah, 5,008, 5,040, 5,140. And it's settled down right about 5,000. I might be able to get it going a little bit faster, but there are limits to how fast you're going to get an inexpensive bearing in a fidget spinner to operate. So we succeeded. Hopefully these tips will help you if you try to build a fidget spinner uh, brushless motor and if I have an opportunity I'll put together a video on how I built the, uh, the tachometer so that I could accurately measure the speed of the fidget spinner. Hope you enjoyed it.